today's video is going to be on functions defined by integrals. So jumping right in, we have a function g of x, which is equal to the integral from negative 1 of x of f of t. So this is a function defined by an integral. Uh, we have the graph of f of t over here. Uh, so this is going to combine a lot of our understanding of the first part of the fundamental theorem. Um, as well as just understanding that integrals are area. So let's jump in. Okay, so our integrals from g of x is negative 1 to x of f of t. So if I want to evaluate g of negative 1, that's going to be the integral from negative 1 to negative 1 of f of t. We don't even have to look at the graph to know that's going to be 0. g of 1. Okay, so this is going to be on our graph. Here's negative one, here's one. So we want that area. Well, that's just the area of a triangle. One half two times two, which will be two. Okay, g of three is gonna be the integral from negative one to three of f of t. Again, this is going to be area, so it's going to be from here now to here. So that's going to be a trapezoid. So one half, the height of our trapezoid is two. The two bases are four and one. So that's going to be five. G of four is going to be the integral from negative one to four. So we're going to have all of this. And we're going to add this, but this is below the x-axis, so it's going to be negative. So we're going to take our previous answer, 5, and subtract that area, which is 1 half, 1 times 2, so just 1. So that's going to be 4. g of negative 3, that's going to be the integral from negative 1 to negative 3 of f of t dt. Well, we're not really used to seeing integrals with the lower bounds like this. So we switch it to the integral from negative 3 to negative 1, and it's going to be the opposite of what we get for that. Well, the integral from negative 3 to negative 1 is this triangle, but it's below the x-axis, so it's negative. So this is negative, so we're going to have a negative negative 1 half 1 times 2, so we get a positive 1. Okay, on what intervals is the graph of g increasing? Well, we want to know then what g prime of x is. Well, using the fundamental theorem, g prime of x, if I take this derivative, is just f of x. So what we have is the graph of the derivative, which we just spent a whole lot of time analyzing. So where is this greater than zero? From negative one to positive three. Now think about that. If the graph of g of x is increasing, think about this as an integral. It's zero here, and as we go this direction, we're adding on positive area. So it's going to be increasing. Our justification is our g prime is greater than zero. Uh, any relative maximums? So let's turn this into a number line. Negative one, our critical points are where it equals zero. It's below the x-axis here, so it's negative, positive, negative. So this graph that we can't see is decreasing, increasing, then decreasing. So we're going to have a relative maximum at x equals 3 because g prime of x, which equals f of x, switches signs from positive to negative. Okay, and then on what intervals is the graph concave down? Well, the second derivative is going to be the first derivative of f. 
So we want to look at the slopes. So where is the slopes? Where is this? These slopes are negative. It's going to be concave down. So the slopes are negative here. So from negative 3 is less than x is less than negative 2, then positive 0, then it's negative again from 2 to 4. So what's my justification? Because that is less than 0. Okay, so here we have f of x equals the integral from 0 to x of f of x. So what is f of 0? Is the integral from 0 to 0, which is 0. At which value does graph of f have an absolute maximum? Well, thinking about this, as I'm integrating, okay, we're integrating from 0 to x values, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it gets to 2, then it's going to go down for a little bit. So our greatest maximum is going to be at x equals 2, and I'm just going to say the most positive area. And at what value does f have an absolute minimum? So absolute minimum on a closed interval can include the endpoints. So thinking about this, at our first endpoint, we're at 0. Then we're adding on positive area to 2. Then it's going to start decreasing, but since this area is not the same as this area, on our closed interval, we're stopping here, it'll, it'll decrease, but it's not going to go back to 0. So it has a 0 when x equals 0. Uh, so just kind of a brief f is 0 at x equals 0 and is never again on this interval. All right, so we have another one. Uh, we have the position of a particle is the integral from 0 to t of f of x, and this is our graph of f of x. Okay, so what is the particle's velocity at t equals 3? Well, velocity is going to be the derivative of this, so the velocity is f of x. So f of 3 is 0. Okay, the acceleration is going to be f prime of x, so the derivative or the slope at 3. So it wants to know, is it positive or negative? So the slope is positive because this is increasing. What is the particle's position at t equals 3? So our position is given by this. Okay, so we want the integral from 0 to 3. So it's going to be this triangle here, which is below the x-axis. So it's going to be a negative 1 half. The base is 3. The height is 6. Uh, so that's going to be a negative 9. When does the particle pass through the origin? Well, that means we want our position to be 0. So what value of x could we plug in here to make this 0? Well, the first obvious choice is when x equals 0. Okay, the other case is when our negative area equals our positive area. So that's going to be at t equals t, t equals 6, because that integral would also be 0. Approximately when is the acceleration 0? So we want when the, since our acceleration is our f prime, when is f prime equal to 0? Well, that's going to be at x equals, or t equals 6. 7, sorry, 7. When is the particle moving up towards the origin? Well, it's going to start at the origin, then it moves away to the negative, then it's moving, so it's at the origin here. Sorry, not at the origin here. So it starts at the origin, then it goes to the negative, then at this point it turns around and it starts coming closer to zero. So it's going to be moving 
towards and away from 0 to 3 it's moving away then at 3 it starts moving back towards okay then at 6 we're at the origin so then it starts moving away again from 6 to about 9 and then on what side of the origin does the particle lie at time 9? So our position is the integral from 0 to 9 of x. Well, I don't know what that value is, but since this and this is 0, if I do add this positive area, it's going to be greater than 0. So it's going to be to the right of the origin. Okay, let's look at another one. Uh, we have the integral from negative 2, so let's make that real clear. Okay, so we're starting at negative 2 to x. We're going to find the zeros of h. So we want to know what values I could plug in for x where this is going to be 0. Well, x equals negative 2 is going to give me a 0. Okay, the integral is, so it, h of x is the integral from negative 2 to x. So what other value could I do to get negative area? Well, that's going to be when the positive area from negative 2 equals the negative area. So if I integrate from negative 2 all the way to 8, we will also have a 0. Eight. Um, because the integral from negative 2 to x of f of 2 equals 0 for both of those. Okay, on what interval is h increasing? So the derivative of h is f of x. So where is it greater than 0? Well, it's going to be greater 0 from negative 4 to 3. And what is h of 0? So h of 0 is going to be the integral from negative 2 to 0 which is just the area. So from negative 2 to 0, that's just going to be that rectangle, which is 6. Uh, so our next one is a free response question. So we've got this funky graph. Let f be a continuous function on negative 4 to 3, consisting of three line segments and a semicircle. Let g be the function given by g of x equals from 1 to x of f of t. So we're going to find g of 2 and g of negative 2. So g of 2 is going to be the integral from 1 to 2 of f of t. Okay, well here's one, here's two. So just that little triangle there is gonna be a negative one half one times one half. So a negative one fourth. Negative because it's below the x-axis. G of negative two is gonna be the integral from one to negative two. But it feels weird having the smaller number up top, so I'm going to change this to negative, the integral from negative 2 to 1. So it's going to be negative, the area from negative 2 to positive 1. So this area is going to be 1 half 3 times 1. This area is going to be negative, so negative one-half pi r, which would be one squared, which on a free response, you can leave your answer just like this. I'm going to clean it up a little bit for the sake of this video. But this is a correct numerical answer. All right, part B. For each of g prime of negative 3 and g double prime of negative 3, find the value or state that it does not exist. Well, 
g prime of x, if g of x is this, the derivative of this is f of x. So g prime of negative 3 equals f of negative 3. We go to 1, 2, negative 3, and that's going to be at 2. g double prime of x is going to be f prime of x. So d double prime of negative 3 is going to be f prime of negative 3. So we want the slope at negative 3. Well, this is going up 2 over 2, so that has a slope of 1. Next part says to find the x-coordinate of each point at which the graph of g has a horizontal tangent line. Uh, and then we're going to determine whether they're relative mins, maxes, or neither, and justify. Okay, well, this we get asked the same question in a lot of different ways. Horizontal tangent line means that g prime of x equals 0, which in our case means f of x equals 0. Well, f of x equals 0 when x equals negative 1 and when x equals positive 1. Okay, so is it a relative max, min, or neither? Well, at x equals negative 1, the graph goes from positive to negative, which means the derivative is going from positive to negative, which means this is a relative maximum because g prime of x, which equals f of x, switches signs from positive to negative. At x equals 1, we're going from negative to negative, so this is going to be neither g prime of x, which equals f of x, does not change sign. Our last question, for negative 4 is less than x is less than 3, find all values where the graph has a point of inflection. Okay, so that's going to be when g double prime of x, which equals f prime of x, changes sign. Well, f prime is the slopes, so we're looking for where it changes slopes. So at negative 2, our slope is positive, then it's negative. Then it's decreasing here. Then it's increasing. Then it's decreasing at x equals 1. So even though if I try to take the derivative at this point, it doesn't exist, the second derivative will change signs because this part is continuous. Our last problem here, uh, we have a graph again of f from 0 to 6, g of x is negative x plus 2, the integral from 2 to x. This is a little bit different, but we can use our knowledge to work through this. g of 3 is going to be negative 3 plus the integral from 2 to 3 of f of t. So that's going to be negative 3. The integral from 2 to 3 is going to be that triangle right there. So that's going to be 1 half 1 times 1. So negative 3 plus a half would be negative 2.5. g prime of x, okay, we're going to take this derivative of each part. The derivative of negative x is negative 1. The derivative of this is just f of x. So this one's slightly different than ones we've seen in the past, but we know how to handle it. So g prime of 3 is going to be negative 1 plus f of 3. So we go to our graph, f of 3 is 1. So this will be negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. Find the x-coordinate of the three critical points of g of x on the open interval 0 to 6. Show the computation that leads to your answer. Okay, well, critical points are when the derivative is 0. So we said g prime of x was negative 1 plus f 
of x. We want that to equal 0. So what we're looking for is where f of x equals 1. Now they kind of gave you a hint and said 3. So if you just went to the graph and went, well, it's 0 here and 0 here, that's only 2. Okay, but it's because of this negative 1. So we're looking for where f of x equals 1, which is going to be here, here, and here. When x equals 1, x equals 3, and x equals 4.5. Okay, find g prime in terms of f. So we're just taking the derivative. The derivative of the negative 1 is 0, so this is just f prime of x. Okay, then it says for each critical point found in part B, state whether it's a relative max, relative min, or neither. Okay, so this is going to depend on the second derivative is f prime. So we're going to look at our three critical points that we found, x equals 1, x equals 3, and x equals 4.5. So we know the first derivative is 0. We can look at the second derivative then to determine if it's a max or a min. Okay, at x equals 1, our slope is negative, which means it's concave down, which means this is a maximum, because g double prime of x is less than 0. At 3, our graph is increasing, so our concavity is positive, which means it's a minimum. And then the last one is also a maximum because g double prime of x is less than zero because our slope is negative here. So just different ways to use integrals and all of our previous uh, graphing information.